Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the Collective of Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome, Cross Watchers. If you're brand new to the channel, happy you landed here today. Just so you know, this is not my normal setup. I'm usually sitting right over here at this chair. There's a desk missing. Um, got a new desk. It arrived damaged. The second version <laughs> will arrive on November 1st. So I have to sit here at my bar. That's my kitchen. This is my living room. Welcome to my home. Crappy lighting, audio through the webcam. We will make do. Hang with me. We can do it. So what I'm going to do is pull from the Oracle. Um, starry, starry beginnings. <laughs> I have called this Oracle deck like three different things since I started this series of readings. We're going with starry beginnings. Let's see what message comes through for you. Perfect! How Aquarian. Card 29. Enjoy where you are, for soon you will be somewhere else. Let's put a unicorn stamp on that. Boom, boom. Here we go. Yes, and 2 and 9, numerologically. It's an 11. Y'all know what I mean. So what I'm going to do for you here, Aquarius, is I know you can't see the table and a lot of you like to see the cards. We'll get back to that as soon as the new desk arrives, but I'll hold up the cards. Um, I'll, you know, as I always do, I'll pull the spread. It's a split soulmate spread, so I'm looking at the two of you separately. Uh, I'll give you my general impressions. We'll go back through with the clarifiers. Um, and for those of you who feel this is particularly poignant or you know, resonant, there's always an extended to take a deeper dive through the perspective of your person. So that's what we're gonna do today. Do keep in mind it's a general reading, it's not a private reading, so it may not resonate for everyone. Take what speaks to you, leave the rest. I do offer private readings, the link is always below, and you have to scroll just a little tiny bit and it will take you to the booking page. Um, last thing, this is the last series of readings where I'm going to go in my normal order of Aries through Pisces. I made a special video for that, should pop up right here, that says, watch this video. Um, to explain, there have been some changes to the YouTube algorithm and it has bounced me out, so I've got to make some changes to bounce my ass back in. So please watch that if you want to know why is she making changes and what will those changes be the video will explain it all to you all right here we go how aquarian of you overall energy for the reading is the king of swords the king of swords is associated with a sign of aquarius so there may be something here um we have aquarian energy and that king of swords coming through as either um, some form of strategy here or that this is an aspect of someone who wants to do the right thing, right? I always see the King of Swords uh, from their higher, let's just say, let's just go on faith, coming through with um, their higher vibration as always reaching for a higher cause, something greater than themselves. Right, wanting to do the right thing, wanting to come from integrity, honor, honesty, truth, etc. So we're going to go with that for now. Your person, yep, they have you. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, over here on your side. Yeah. Now remember, energies can come through reverse. What does that mean? That means that when I say you, 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 and I'm doing an Aquarian reading, I can mean you, you, you the cross watcher watching. So since this side seems to be Aquarian energy is what I set my intention for, it really could be the cross watcher. So just take what speaks to you, like I said. But your person is coming through with you on their mind, someone who has captured their heart, someone that they know there's, a, it's like a soft place to land. You're sensitive, you're warm, you're compassionate, you're open hearted. What is the challenge is you see right through them, okay? They have met their match. Now, it's not for a lack of your diplomacy or your ability to kind of reach out and say, well, as long as we're being honest, right? Because the Queen of Swords is a truth seeker um, and a truth teller. She just doesn't want any bullshit, that's all. 
But this is presenting a problem for this person because, as you know, King of Swords is also not given to long soliloquies. Like, this is someone who's very parsimonious. Less is more. They say very little and, as a result, can kind of come across not real warm and fuzzy. So that might be part of the challenge here. Meaning you're on a search for some kind of information, some kind of truth. Um, but the opportunity for your person is all about the connection, right? What is going to serve the highest good of this connection? What is going to serve the highest good of this connection? You are coming into the reading. It's all about manifestation and your belief that you have the tools available in your very earthbound life to manifest what you desire. The problem is <laughs> you're not trusting this person's intentions. You might be looking at this person who doesn't really give you a lot to work with verbally. Um, you may be seeing a shadier side or you may be perceiving their avoidance or their um, lack of the warm and fuzzy as some kind of ulterior motive, right? If they're avoidant, you may see that as some ulterior motive. And what is your opportunity to see the depth of their feelings? So now we have a king and queen of cups and we have a king and queen of, king and queen of swords. So we have an intellectual match, right? We have a couple here that really is well suited for each other in terms of the way you perceive the world. Your communication can probably go either way. You're either like right there, you know, tracking with each other or things can go pretty far south. Emotionally speaking, at the level of heart at least, um, great capacity here. Uh, a good emotional match, although the King of Cups and the King of Swords, may I dare say, both struggle with expressing feelings. Yeah. Oh well. It happens. Uh, not for the lack of feeling, but for the expression of, of the feelings. So that's what we're looking at here. Let's go ahead and get some clarity. I'm being punked. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of figuring out, I love this, enjoy where you are for soon you will be somewhere else because from the bottom of the deck, this two of pentacles is like, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm really dealing with here in, in 3D. Um, and for those of you who are new, I'll explain that the cards from the bottom of the deck are where we're tapping into what we can't see. So we're either tapping into unconscious awareness within you or within your person or something playing out behind the scenes. Either way, you can't see it, but it's still a factor here that you want to be aware of because it's energy and it's present. But I am seeing this double king of swords is sort of dominating this situation. Both maybe... Um, in the strategy of the situation, past life soulmate energy here, there's comfort in this connection, but there's this lack of an ability for this person to decide, like they're on the fence. Um, and so there is, you know, one part of this person really wants to do the right thing and the other part of them is in total strategy mode. Um, and it could seem very self-serving and it could lead one to go, Hmm. Right? Can I trust this person's intuition? Uh, can I trust this person's intention? Do you notice how I just said intuition? That's a very interesting slip. You have to trust your own intuition about their intention. And I kind of mashed those two together. They're not trusting their intuition. Maybe. So let's see the Queen of Cups. So we have themes, a theme here, 
like, right? You make them happy. You are this ray of sunshine. The sun is also about feeling safe and protected in one's vulnerability. And look at that little guy riding around the yard, naked as a jaybird on his pony, playing with his silk scarf, pretty little sunflowers there. But look closer. There is a stone wall behind him protecting him from the harsh realities of the world beyond the palace. What is that? You know, palace gates, palace walls. So that's where we get the sun is this sense of, it's our, it's our conscious awareness, but it's also like when we show ourselves to the world in any form, we have to we have to feel pretty safe. You know, we're being vulnerable. Um, in any aspect of life, when we're operating from our conscious awareness, we're, we're saying, here, I'm putting myself out there. I'm doing it right now with you all. And there has to be a way where I get some joy out of this that allows me to feel safe and protected in my vulnerability. In this reading, this person is coming in saying, you, whoever you are watching, you know, from your heart, from what you give me, you make me feel safe enough that I might consider the themes around commitment. What's she saying? <laughs> right? Hierophant conventional committed relationship, but er, not so fast, Laura. We have the five of pentacles underneath, but am I worthy of this queen of cups? Am I worthy? There's something here with this person that they're, uh, right? And, and there's also still this struggle with the queen of swords, which I do feel there are unanswered questions that you have and that this person may be dodging and not revealing very strategically that may come back to that five of pentacles that you can't see. So the struggle is, for them, your questions are all definitely related to, well, if things, if, if, if you feel my love and, let's go here, right? Because you know you can't see this. That's in from the bottom of the deck. And they're coming in with all this, yes, I, I, I love our energy together. I, I, I feel your warmth. I feel... The connection, you make me happy. I feel like we could have this normal, <laughs> committed connection. And you're and the struggle for this person is you're coming in, all right. Well then what's the problem? Why are things not progressing? <laughs> you know, because the four uh, the the chariot is progress and victory and triumph and overcoming things. And the Four of Wands is the beginning of life partnership. It's very celebratory. It's very lovely energy. It's, yeah, well, got a lot of other meanings too, but the, uh, you know, the Knight of Cups is Knights make offers. Where's the offer? Well, there's something here that's, Keeping this person in this, oh, I don't know. They're on the fence. They're torn. They're undecided for some reason. And I, it may be more about their own sense of worth and value, what they feel they can offer you, whether they feel secure and stable enough. It could be financial for some of, of them. It's going to be different for each of you. It's a general reading. But the opportunity for this person, two of cups, 
is to overcome the obstacles. Strength card, Six of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. What can you give? Be generous with what you do have to give. I'm talking to the King of Swords, by the way. Right? Like, this is their opportunity, is gather up your strength, your courage, and your confidence, dear King of Swords, and come in with the generosity of spirit. You know? of your time, of your energy, of whatever resources you do have, of your love. And we'll forge a path, we'll forge our way toward the future together. We'll build a life together. We'll help each other. It's not supposed to just all fall onto one person. And sometimes the King of Swords comes through in that way. And since spirit doubled down with the King of Swords, I, I'm kind of feeling uh, a, little, a, little, a little some sort of way about this King of Swords feeling they're unprepared for the responsibilities and obligations of the vows we make and take in a partnership. So their opportunity is to see it differently, to see partnership as something we help each other with, which is a message of the strength card. You're not in this alone. We help each other. So let's see you here, magician. Woo. <laughs> yeah. death card and the ace of wands it's like you're manifesting something totally new and different you're coming in to with like it's not a new and different person but a new and different experience the aces are gifts from spirit notice spirit's arm coming through the ether the hand gift you know with the ace it's like here take it but you have to receive it. The Ace of Wands. Uh, uh, it's, uh, yes, it's a new, you know, this new opportunity. It's um, motivation. It's divine gift of inspired passion. And the Death card come. It's like bringing something back up, reigniting the torch of passion. That's what's being manifested here. And yet, on some level, maybe on an internal level, outside of conscious awareness, you know, you're trying to go with the flow. There's not a lot of push coming from you, which is probably a smart thing. Um, there's this sense of, like, an eternal timeline coming from temperance of everything's going to, you know, in, a, in, in time, everything comes into flow and balance. So I'm just going to keep working on my manifestation. And I'm just going to focus on that. And I'm not going to worry about the timing of things. Because temperance is the higher octave of Sagittarian energy. And Sagittarius, you know, tends to want things quick, fast, in a hurry. But temperance is... Uh, the um, It's like the spiritual wisdom part of the ninth house. Um... There's an awareness that things happen at a higher plane than what we can see here um, in 3D. So we keep one foot on the ground, one foot in our feelings, and we keep the energies moving in flow, and we stay balanced as things are being processed as above, so below. And it's sort of happening in this eternal dance so I do feel there's a lot of wisdom here, whoever you are. In your manifestation process, there's a part of you that is trying to resurrect something in this connection. Um, and you are aware that it isn't going to happen like that. Your challenge is either you have some receipts on something, or you've got like a pit in your gut that tells you you can't trust something here. So let's see what that's about. Wow. Wow. 
You feel avoided. You feel like this person, this King of Swords, our little double hit of the King of Swords here, who can be very, can be a little avoidant, right? They don't give you a lot to work with. They're great communicators, but very, like I said, parsimonious. They don't say a lot. And maybe this is somebody that you feel has been uh, a little unapproachable, hard to reach, and you're perceiving it as avoidant in a, in a, in a way that's leaving you way too curious and it's weighing on you. It's like you're saying, this is more than I care to deal with. It's a lot. It's becoming quite the burden. It's this page of swords underneath that curiosity turns into suspicion. Low, lower vibration than is good for this connection. So it's a challenge. Uh, this is their energy and it's weighing on you. And it's beginning to... Um, eat away at you. You're trying to stay high vibration here, I can see it, but this is turning into something that um, can really compromise your manifestation process and, and your intuition as well, your ability to trust that. So let's see the King of Cups. Okay. So in the opportunity position, you know, we have the King of Cups is being able to sense the depth of somebody's feelings without needing to hear it. You know, it's like, it's not always what I, what I say, it's what I do. How, how does this person show you how they feel when they're there to show? And then we have the King of Pentacles. How do they show up for you? King of Pentacles is a masculine archetype of a life partner. And sometimes there are people that don't demonstrate their feelings with words. They demonstrate them by like, you know, making sure there's air in your tires. <laughs> okay. I'm the girl that loves that. <laughs> okay. I love coming home knowing that my car's been serviced. <laughs> Like, I want to come home from the grocery store and toss the keys and they're going out to the trunk of the car to bring in the groceries, reach the top shelf in the cupboards. That's my kind of person. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, there are people that don't, that are not very demonstrative on an emotional level, but they show it in other ways in a very grounded, earthbound kind of way. So I think there's an opportunity here for you to see it in action, or at least to take the time to explore that. And then you're either going to trust what your emotions, you know, what your feelings tell you and how your intuition responds to it. Like almost I'm seeing this moon as like, Oh, oh, yeah, she's right. I get that now. I see that now. They did this thing. Oh, that thing happened, and this is how they responded. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you have to kind of go back through the game tapes. And, uh, and your process of observation, even in hindsight, sort of fills in those gaps of what wasn't said. And it is love languages, and love languages are different. And maybe this person is coming up short on a love language that you need, but if you, if you can observe what they demonstrated, you can go, oh, mm, it was there all the time. And the Five of Cups underneath is... Maybe it's playing out behind the scenes that this person has some regrets, some woulda, coulda, shouldas. Maybe this is within you, some sense of, you know, because the Five of Cups is looking backwards. It's not present energy. It's like, you know, like 
the regrets of the past, the mistakes of the past, the sense of loss, a sense of despair, um, something we feel we lost or that we once had but was taken away, you know, and maybe it's not really true it's something you're gonna ha- you're gonna have an opportunity to tap into your intuition and your feelings about how this person has shown you in real time how truly they they do feel and maybe their regrets of not having demonstrated it in a way that you would have no question. As always, Aquarius, or whoever you are watching, it's like I need a decoder ring for your reading sometimes because they're deep. They're deep. Um, But they're meaningful. So that is what I have for you for now. The extended will go deeper into um, this King of Swords. Which, so if you're here, let's say, as the Aquarius, that's okay. doesn't mean we're going into you. It, it could be your person. Um, but we're looking at their perception of you, their feelings for you, their intentions toward you. What are they getting from you, good, bad, or indifferent? That's important. Um, their level of physical, you know, chemistry, level of fulfillment. Even if you're at a distance, chemistry is still chemistry. Um, and where they see this relationship headed. So if this has resonated for you, there are links below. Option one is a renewal for Aquarius. So you get every extended I've ever done for Aquarius, this one and all the ones to come, but it's a monthly renewal membership. The second option is just this extended one and done. And option three is the all access pass for everything. So check that out. Also, um, if you have enjoyed this reading and have not yet done so, please do subscribe below. That is our energetic exchange. It's what keeps me here on this platform doing what I love to do, which is to bring messages to help you all navigate your relationships. Okay, that's what we're doing here. And that is what I have for you. Let me give you the astrology. King of Swords came out twice here. That is associated with the sign of Aquarius. We have the Queen of Cups. Cancerian energy. The sun is the sun, but rules the sign of Leo. Hierophant is Taurus. Queen of Swords, love her. Some Libra energy there. Chariot is Cancerian energy. Our Knight of Cups is Pisces. Love me some. Strength card is Leo. The Magician is Mercury, Virgo, and Gemini. We've got the um, Death card is Scorpio. Sagittarian energy in the Temperance card, more Virgo here in the Hermit, Page of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, King of Cups is Scorpio, King of Pentacles is Taurus, the Moon is Pisces. That's what I have. I'm headed to the extended. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.